Hello. Eisenberg uncertainty principle time. Time to do it. The proof. The proof of it. The proof. Damn proofs. Proof. Yeah. That means mathematics. That's what that means. Booyaksha. Okay. So what we're trying to prove. Well, if we remember our uncertainty principle. So we have some deviation in x times the deviation in uh, momentum. Ooh. And uh, that would be like the, in the x direction. We would have an uncertainty, and that is larger than or equal to h bar on two. Ooh, ooh, or 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 h on four pi. Yes. Okay, that's all we're looking for. Okay. So let's begin. Okay. What we have to do is we'll have to uh, describe some things such as the root mean square, and we'll say, okay, so that's the root mean square, and let's say we're doing it for some thing a. Uh, you call it variable a. Uh, I can't remember the word for it. Um, and so that is this. And what that means is, so, say we were to square this, like that, essentially what we're looking for is uh, an equitation value here. Uh, this is uh, just simple statistics, uh, essentially, like these root mean squares and all that, so I'll cover that in a later video. But, uh, just sticking to the physics, the quantum physics stuff. So we have a complex conjugate, and and this and uh, what we'll have here is this uh, sandwiched in between. So what we get is this. So the value minus the expectation value of, of that in particular. So that's uh, I think that's the variance when you have a deviation squared. So this is the variance squared. No, and it's in some dimension. Just use tau. So didn't specify if it's x, y, or z. Okay. So, and then uh, that expectation value. So that's where this that equals. Uh, oh, I should just say first before I say what that is. So this is equivalent to this integral in direct notation. Swish, it is very swish. This is direct notation. Mm. So, this uh, expectation value in direct notation is something like this. That, uh, these are bra kets. <laughs> it's about bra kets. And so, these. That is a bra. That is a cat. Wow, wow, wow. Right. So what have we done? What, what, what can we do from here? So, um, what can we do from here? Okay, what we're gonna do is, uh, we'll let a minus uh, the expectation value of a equal this, and we'll say so that's a particular operator. Oops, that, that, that squared. So what we'll get from that earlier thing, so what we have was this balance equals something wonderful, something magical. And this can actually be made uh, even smaller. That equals this. There we go. Just condense everything. That could also actually be written as that, but we're not going to use that one. I don't want to use that one, no way. We'll do the same for another variance, so uh, variance in B equals, gosh, oh that's, that's so cool. Okay, now we've done that. Um. I have to have a quick word with the commutators, have a quick word about them. So here we have a commutator, so that's what a commutator is. And 
what is special about, uh, we'll say, for this commutator is that uh, when we expand it, we get that, but that does not equal zero. That's a special feature about these commutators. Mm, this one does not commute. All right. So what that would imply is that if we would take the expectation value of this, that would return non-zero. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Alright. So let's tie these two variances together. Yeah. That's variance A. That's variance B. And uh, what do we get? We get this. Now, if we remember our Schwarz inequality, uh, and I'm not going to prove that, that's, uh, that can be proven in another video, um, what we find is uh, this on the right hand side is greater than or equal to the norm of uh, these properties like this. It's glard. That, that's pretty interesting. But, there's a little problem here, okay. We'll get stuck here if we don't uh, see something. What we, what we can see is that uh, this is neither Hermitian nor anti-Hermitian. <coughs> um, and Hermitian, mm, we need to talk about that too. So let's say if we have A and B, and both of these are Hermitian, then this is anti-Hermitian, and then to make it Hermitian, we put an I at the front, and makes it real. That's that's that thing, okay. But also, here's some more information about Hermitian operators. Uh, all these operators that you'll ever come across in in uh, quantum physics are Hermitian. They should be. So another thing is, so say we uh, have expectation value of some operator. And it's complex conjugated. Did, did, did I just invent a word? And this. So complex conjugate. That is complex conjugate. And that complex conjugate. The complex conjugate is the real thing. <laughs> so those just swip around, and that goes in there. And what we get is uh, essentially the adjoint of its complex conjugate adjoint thingy. I'll talk about that in some other video. It's uh, just yeah. Oh, you can look it up yourself. It's a uh, that's called a dagger. You can look it up. It's in Wikipedia. It's an amazing site. So much information there. And uh, if this is Hermitian, that means it's self-adjointing. So what would that give us? It would give us this. It returns the, the same operator. Woo! Self-adjointing. That means it's uh, and it's real. It's Hermitian. It's an Hermitian thing. Let's say if we had another one, dagger, and that returned a negative, then it's anti-Hermitian. Wow. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now that we don't know, we can continue on. So what we'll do is uh, we'll have to try and make this uh, this something better. So what we do we we'll do something that's really really obvious. So half plus half equals the whole one. Wow. But uh. What happens if we do uh, half this? Oh, oh, oh. Well, well, then we have to take away a half of this to equal it out, and uh, we can uh, put a couple of these together. So, say we put uh, those two together and uh, and these two on the ends together. So what we get is bring up the half. Um, the above. Minus b uh, plus f uh, b plus b uh. yeah look at that that's fantastic now if you recognize from earlier this is our commutator hmm. and that's the positive commutator so what we can write here is we go half and then we have uh come b uh, should be more more cornery yeah, 
We could put a subtrip mice, but uh, uh, we should here just because we're gonna have a plus positive one. Over ha. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Look that. See if we uh if we don't look have this one, and uh, we usually come across these, and uh, we don't use the subscripts. Okay. So we have off. Now let's uh, see what we can do when we put in to our shorts and quality. So we have that. Um, let's move things around. Yeah, that equals kind of fits. Right. So, hmm. Okay. Oh, and square. There we go. It's done to both sides. Now, uh, what we can do is we can actually split these up because remember they're uh, like these are integrals. That's well, actually, that is is the direct notation form of an integral. So, say you remember with an integral you have uh, x uh, plus say that plus b x cubed. Nox. Well, that's the same as doing the sum of those. So the I think it's the sum of the integrals the same as the integrals of the sum. S yeah. So is it? A oh, well, that's supposed to be a constant. So that's also another thing you can do in here. So these are constants you can bring them out. So as you know, I feel silly doing this. You should know this already. <coughs> um, x uh, thing. Yeah, like that. So that's what we're gonna do. Ha. Huh. All right. So that equals um, a lot of things. Half uh, expectation value of this commutator swing plus half of the other one swing and there. There we go. Wow. Okay. So, we look at this right hand side, we'll notice something that this is always positive. It's an always non zero. Right? So, <gasps> what happens if we remove it? It's gone. It's going. It disappeared. And we can bring this over here. Yeah. Just like that. That never existed. Which also means that uh, that would become an inequality. What we get greater than or equal to. Wow, wow, wow. So, uh, this, so this on the far left hand side of the left hand side, <laughs> look at that. Uh, I'll bring it down. Bring it down. And the swing, we get that. That's what we get. Right. So, what can we do with this? Um, oh, yes, we'll go back even further. What that also gives us is then. Remember from the original swatch, what's inequality? Uh, thingo half A B and stop messaging. There we go. Okay. Mm, okay. And as you remember from before, uh, this commutator is same or equals this. So then, uh, all we can get is we go back to all the way to the beginning. The variance squared of that one, and the variance. <laughs> uh, I just remembered about my stats lecture. Uh, monotone pictures presents. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Uh, so I'll s square, I'll square that. So yeah, that's not squared. <sighs> uh, it's a quarter. And I'll write the equivalent form of this uh, absolute value squared, which is 
this Hermitian commutator, well not Hermitian, uh, real commutator. Yeah. God squared. That's equivalent. That's equivalent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. It certainly is. It's always real. It's always positive. Positive. Okay. Um, and... So... Okay. Well, we, that, that, we almost have it. We almost have it. Well, I mean, that practically is it. That's it. <laughs> it's done. It's proven. Yeah. I just did it. I am fantastic. But let's go a little bit further. Okay. So, we'll let, uh... Uh, this operator equal our uh, x operator, and we'll let v equal uh, uh, momentum, which if we have ever seen before, which I haven't shown yet, I don't think so, is this. That's the momentum operator. Okay. So if we were to do that down here, yes. What would that give us? I don't know. Well, let's just put this on the side so it will help us figure out what it does. Ooh. So, what does this do? Okay, um... Remember... Uh, I'll just bring everything out the front that I can. So, minus I, I just blah. And then it's an X. And it's a D. Swizzle schwazzle. Blah. Minus, and okay, so this would be in here on there, the minus, minus h bar right at the front, and this was a minus times minus, so it's positive. So I'm gonna bring it out a minus here, so it makes the negative there. And <laughs> hey, so this is a d, and this is differential of all of it. Schwizzle. Okay. And uh, so we have to do something about that. So what do we have? Minus i h bar x. Use uh, I think it's the product rule. Yeah. Prime product. I think it's the product. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, no. And we get this, and I think we also get another negative, and boom, um, that doesn't go there, that goes here. And that's what we get. Yes, yeah, so those disappear, and we get a negative times negative is positive, and that goes away. So in the end, what we get is i h bar times that. So, if we were to get rid of that, find that this equals i h bar. Wow, we wow. So, oh, we've almost found the one, the inequality that everyone knows about. Okay, um, so we just uh, put that into the thing over here. It's because that's what we've done. So. <laughs> Okay, so that, let's say, we have that, uh, and that equals quarter, and we bring out all the constants, um, because that's just, okay, I'll write it out explicitly, so we have i times i h bar, um, actually, I'll write out the whole thing. I times I H bar. That. And just like with uh, integrals, remember, you can bring out the constants. So, that's, uh, oh, and that's squared. Um, so, I times I is negative 1 squared, H bar squared, so H bar squared on 4. And we get this, which equals 1, so we get h bar squared on 4. We can square root everything. So, oh, I <laughs> forgot to change that. How embarrassing. There we go. So, what we get is this times that. These are, um, I can't think of the word for them. That's embarrassing, but you know what it is. Um, yeah, filming this too late at night. We got h bar on two. There we go. That's 
what everyone knows as uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Mm. Oh, you enjoyed? I did. <laughs>